Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Kirk, Patty Cake. I'm an author, idiot, and loin streamer. And today I'm going to be going through some of the things that I drew in July. Initially, I was going to do like once every quarter and then everything that I've done in a quarter. But everything that I drew, even as a speed thing on here, uh, export, is still about 49 minutes just to put stuff from July together and about an hour for things just from August and I didn't even compile everything from September so I'm gonna do I'm gonna possibly try to switch it up to being a monthly thing for the the things that I write and then I can also just talk about like what I've been developing as well so obviously we're gonna be catching up a little bit on the things that I've been drawing but there have been so many developments especially for the Westies that it is really fun and so then I think going forward the, uh, the art days might just be a good way to kind of catalog or journal sort of what's been going on in the last month. I cannot explain just how excited I am for the Westies. The cast is so good. It'll be the legend of Bill Cassidy. I only hope that uh, Monty and I can do it justice writing it down because the concept... <laughs> the concepts and the characters and the imagery and the relationships and the growth are all very different than actually sticking it together formally and then like editing it anyway i can get into all of that once we get started because uh we got some drawings to go through the there were also some events that happened in july or i should say an event that happened in july but before we get started number one if you enjoy what i do here on the channel please remember to like share and subscribe for more number two if you would like to be featured on the channel check out the links down in the description below the number one way to be featured is through Lemoy, the monthly prompt writing contest, where I give you a prompt, you write a short story revolving using that prompt. And on the first Monday video of the month, we go through some of those short stories together because you guys are incredible. The second way to be featured is if you are an indie author and you have a book out or a book that is coming out, if you submit your first chapter and your cover page to the Fresh Meat feature, they will be read here on the channel to hopefully help more readers find your work because your books deserve to be found by their ideal readers and I may or may not be them, <laughs> but they are out there either way. Third thing is if you'd like to check out any of my books, they're available at any of your favorite retailers, uh, wherever you get books and also the library and also the library upon request. And finally, just a new thing because um, I've been reading the books and the longer reviews will be just a little bit uh, more reserved going forward because I want to be able to share more stuff, even if it's not to my taste. And uh, you'll still get comments of like stuff that stuck out to me, either in a positive or negative way. And I'll be talking about the genres and the way that I picked those books up anyway. So in case they interest you, maybe you'll go and, and uh, check those out. And then I can get to more books because I got, you know, a lot of these over here. I got a lot of them on my desktop that I haven't read yet. I've been wanting to read the cold dish but the ala books have just taken up so much time uh with that said let's get into the art from july july was a month that i was looking forward to one because uh it had just started with the westies being developed i mean they pretty much developed fairly quickly at least the initial characters billy and ace and this would be billy from billy and ace uh they came in pretty quickly during the after the first red dead redemption stream and they have just been growing exponentially since then i am so excited for their story uh billy actually came in with me feeling like she was going to be mute she didn't talk very much and as it's actually developed more she has remained fairly quiet she expresses herself non-verbally she is the hunter of the group more most often she is the cook of the group most often um she travels with her brothers uh tommy and ace though i should say ike if i'm gonna say tommy i should say ike because otherwise it's buck and ace because they have their outlaw names but it's uh it is what it is and she is somewhat socially inept i love her character so much it's ridiculous um but she's socially inept they kind of grew up away from regular society particularly after the age of 13 14 because of what happened with their father and their uncle um and just having to stay on the move because obviously both of the twins and tommy are very visually stunning especially their eyes their eyes are a particular color of blue which is the cassidy cobalt which their father bill cassidy was known for and uh, their their father bill cassidy also had the freckles that the twins have and um so they can't stay in places for very long 
And uh, so she, after after a run-in with their uncle when they were, I want to guess, 13 or 14, uh, Monty and I have to talk about that a little bit more, but I think that we can actually hone it down into being within six months of their father's death where they have this this situation. Um, she actually gets strangled, and initially she was already quiet. She's already a shy girl. And then uh, after the trauma of what happens to her dad, she kind of goes nonverbal. And as she's slowly recovering while they live with their grandparents, they get attacked, and she, her esophagus is damaged from being strangled. Uh, and so even though it does recover and she can speak, she has a very soft voice, a very mild voice, and she's very restrained in how she talks. This is one of the earlier drawings of Ike. You're going to see as we go forward that Ike's appearance has actually evolved <laughs> as I've been drawing him more and figuring out more what he looks like. I've had a better idea of what Billy looks like, um, but Ike's hair has changed on and off. I still like his little, but I think the ponytail is much more fitting for him. Uh, I actually made these two into little keychains. I don't have them on me, but uh, there's there's a possibility of keychain merch eventually, and other types of merch eventually if it becomes something that anybody would actually want. But the twins, I love because they really play on each other. Ike is a devil. He is a little hellion, and I feel a little bit bad for Tommy for having to be the father to, to Ike during the teen years. Because what a worse time for an 18-year-old brother to have to take over being the parent of your younger brothers when they're your younger siblings, I should say, when they're 13 slash 14. But Billy was always quiet and demure and obedient, and she doesn't really ask for much, and she pretty much obeys what her brothers want. But Ike has always uh, been impulsive and challenged his brothers leadership when he felt like he could and also was just impulsive he stole a prized horse and thought that he could just say that he found it in the woods and get away with it but he knew that tommy would uh call him on his lying and he wanted to see if he could get away with it so this was me drawing michi off of a a style that i saw where it was very very stylized i probably could have actually gone away from from doing the inking lines and done a little bit more uh, attempted a little bit more of the digital painting but there are a couple of things that you'll see in the next couple of months worth of drawing where I've just tried to do different things I was not very happy with the way that this turned out but uh, it was still just more of an experiment in style than anything where it was the small hip or the uh, small waist and the large hips and trying to be very very round and uh yeah, I think it would have been better if I had tried to get away from doing the obvious line art and making it a little bit more bubbly just to play with it. And I actually, looking at this now, I think it prob I could could have been a lot happier with it <laughs> if I'd have gotten rid of that line art. You could see at some point I just kind of gave up. Oh, if we got one of the first drawings of Marcella. And Marcella is among the Westies. Marcella Jane Bailey. She is the daughter of a gun tycoon uh, from Utah. And a very, very notable one, Mr. Maxwell Bailey. Uh, people seek him out, especially law enforcement seek him out so that they can get custom-made guns by Mr. Bailey. And uh, Marcella is 18, 19 years old. She is born and raised basically to become somebody's uh, wife. And... <laughs> that doesn't really happen. You've learned in the prologue. Well, I mean, it does happen, but not how her father would want. Her father was ready to was her father was raising her to sort of be a trading piece with other manufacturers of sorts to expand the business, expand the empire. And at the time that we go into the story, the prologue of the Westies actually has her meeting Tommy Cassidy from the the outlaw group because he sneaks into her house and she, after he's been shot and he found she finds him in her basement and decides to take care of him instead of being threatened because he is just bleeding out and she is just the kindest soul person. She's naive. She's sort of a songbird in a cage, but she doesn't really realize it because she thinks that her father is keeping her in her cage or in the house in order to protect her. Because one of the first things that she says to Tommy in their first meeting, well, after they are talking, because she takes care of him and then he comes to see her. And she eventually tells him, you know, her dad says that you should protect the things that you value and you think are 
worth something. And so then she eventually gives Tommy uh, a custom Bailey gun that she takes from her dad's vault because she thinks that he is valuable to, and especially valuable to her and wants to make sure that she can do what she can to protect him since he kind of goes out and comes back. Now their relationship starts and is very, very cute as they build because Tommy sneaks into the house and she takes care of him for a couple of days. People come looking for him because he had been obviously chased and uh, disappeared onto that property to hide the night before because he was being chased and kind of in danger and kind of passing out on his horse because he was losing so much blood. And he probably would have died if not for Marcella. I mean, even if Marcella hadn't um, taken care of his wounds, if she had called for Mr. Brown, who is basically her home guard, he would have died. Um, but their relationship starts and continues because she invites him to stay at the house as long as he needs to until he has to go and then she invites him back if he's ever in the area and needs a place to hide she's gonna leave the basement door open and not tell anybody well he comes back later uh but she's gone because she's off with her dad and then the next time that he comes by she's actually got a stack of letters because she's really been thinking about tommy and so then every time something happened that oh maybe she would want to tell tommy about it she just wrote a letter instead but she didn't have anywhere to send it since he was kind of a drifter and he didn't give a place of where he would be and so it, she just started writing letters just in case he ever showed up again and then he did about a month and a half a month month and a half later after they first met and so then she just started writing him letters every time she experienced something and wanted to tell him something and so then he started writing letters and bringing her letters to read and over time as he would come through utah they would visit with each other and talk and exchange letters and then he would go on his way and she was always just in the house she didn't get to explore much like i said her dad wanted to protect her and she, he was not letting her go out go out much um, you learn earlier on, part of the prologue is just establishing this relationship between these two because the main tension of the first book here is that Marcella is going to be married off to a man named Christopher Maxim. Uh, and he is a steel and metals manufacturer, and that's going to create the empire of Maxim and Bailey. So Tommy comes in and, um, offers Marcella the chance to run away with him or to stay here and marry Christopher, and she runs off with Tommy because she's in love with Tommy. They've had a relationship for over a year. It, was, it started out as a friendship turned into she absolutely adores him. And he gave her that necklace that she is wearing. It actually has a phrase on it that says in, a, in a French that says something like, the one who has imprisoned my heart. And... He just saw it while he was out and brought it back to her, and she always wears it. It's always under her outfit. Oh, this is getting into the event that happened in July, which was Sam came down with his roommate, and uh, we went to a convention. I actually dressed up as Majima. I'm going to put some pictures here on the screen for my cosplay. And so then while we were sitting at the table, I was drawing. <laughs> Kind of, it had been a couple of days. So I have, I even have less drawings from July, which there are a lot of drawings in general, and I should probably be doing studies as opposed to continually drawing uh, if I want to improve. But I was sitting behind a table. This was after like days of not drawing, and I didn't have any way to have a reference because we were sitting in a table in a convention center. And so I was just drawing whatever I could think of drawing. Obviously, it's going to be Katsuo. I love having so many characters that are just available at the ready so that I can just... Uh, <laughs> he is such a character, too. Oh, my gosh. He's one of them. I I keep saying, like, I'm so excited to share this story because I'm so excited to share these characters. But, like, I feel that about all of my characters is I want so many people to see these characters as I've gotten to know them, as I've gotten to draw them and write them privately and experience who they are as people and experience their attitudes. And one of my favorite things, even though I don't necessarily like looking at my art because it's not where I would like it to be, the one thing that I can say is I feel like in looking at most of my art is um, the character's personalities come through. Oh my gosh, horrendous, horrendous. Sitting in the convention center, I remember I looked at like a momentary uh, reference for this pose on my phone because I found something on Twitter and I was like, I like that angle. I could not draw to save my life. I gave up on this one. I started drawing chemtrails. 
in the sky. I just could not get her face right at all. It was so bad. I don't know what the problem was. But it, I just, I could not. Okay, just for the record. Well, this is, <laughs> I think this is a lesson in, was I using possibly the wrong brush even to do sketching? I think this is a lesson in perseverance and just like continuing even when you're having a bad art day, even when you feel like you cannot draw and uh, the bad art days come, like where the writing is worse, where the, the drawing is worse, where freaking everything is worse and you just have to keep going. Some days maybe even do the, the bare minimum or just do exercises. A lot of the time I start doing chibis if I'm really struggling and even then I will be like, I don't know how to feel about these chibis, but to some extent, I also understand that I think we all have a, cor not a, it's like a corrupt way of looking at our own art because we are so used to seeing our personality and our influences and the styles and also thinking about like where we are, but where we wish we could be or would be instead of where we actually are. And, um, so this, <laughs> so for, um, Sam's roommate, had a lot of titty pads and um like mouse pads so i got one obviously you're gonna know who my titty pad is and it's a majima titty pad <laughs> oh, good um you can't help it anyway so then uh sam's roommate had a bunch of titty pads for sale and so then i decided while i was sitting there i would draw what would what would what could be if ever there was a michi titty pad because why not and that's how this ended up Anyway, even in the worst art days, this is one of the reasons why for me, my methodology for getting through writing, especially drafts, is even in the worst art days, if I give myself a minimum word count, then at least it's moving the story forward, even if it sucks, because I do multiple passes. The revisions that I do are complete rewrites of the manuscript. Like from bottom up, I open a new document and I just start writing using the old document as a guide, but just rewriting. So as I feel things for inserting new descriptions of the scenario or of the surroundings or new descriptions of emotions or new areas for dialogue where people are talking and, oh, this is going to go in a completely different direction. I'm going to erase those in the old version because now it's going over here because I got a better impulse for the characters. Like, that's the revisions. So I don't have to worry so much about getting things correct the first time through. And so then even on bad art days, I know that when I get to editing, which is going to be line editing for making stuff flow better, for bringing out character better, for getting rid of stuff that is not necessarily on point for those characters. It'll get rid of paragraphs. Like, I feel like there's big revision and there's small revision because I would say Body More 3 went through bigger revision in changing out scenes, like totally removing stone from some scenes. Initially, um, and I know most people probably have not read Body More 3 yet, but there is a scene when Casey and Joey go to Mortem together. And initially in an earlier draft, Stone also had gone with them. And um, one of my close friends and first readers actually pointed out that Stone was kind of disappearing and not adding a whole lot to the scene. And after reading through it again, I was like, you know, you're right. And I just totally removed him from that scene. Or from those scenes. Uh, here we got 24 hour Cinderella Mashima because how we're still at the conference. Like, one of the things that I love about drawing is a lot of the time I can remember special events or things that were going on as I was drawing. This was actually on Sunday of the conference or the convention and uh, leading up to the the closing. I have no idea what made me want to draw specifically 24 hour Cinderella, but I did. Funny story though, also, Sam disappeared on one of the days, I think it was Saturday, to go and specifically look for any Yakuza related content. And he was just walking by. I hope he doesn't mind if I tell this story. I think it's cute. I think it's also uh, indicative of his skills as an artist. But he was just walking through the artist's alley slash vendor's room because they were kind of mixed. A lot of vendors or a lot of artists actually purchased vendor tables. And um, so he was just walking through the vendor's room looking for any art style that he would think, would that person have Yakuza-related content? And <laughs> he 
went up to one and asked them, and they did, because he was looking for something to get me. And then he came back with a charm, a keychain of them. So now that's on my bag for my, uh, my drawing stuff. And then obviously after doing 20, oh my gosh, this is where it started. Brian, you're going to see in the next couple of months that Katsuo is just like putting on all of the 80s clothing. He just is living his best life dressing in the uh, the vintage clothing. So obviously he put on his dad's 24-hour Cinderella costume. I could not draw Majima doing 24-hour Cinderella and not draw Katsuo doing 24-hour Cinderella. Apparently Katsuo just loves vintage clothing because... I've drawn him in Kiryu's outfit recently. I, he's also got the leisure suit of the uh, the leopard pants and the velvet red shirt. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to him, but he is so funny, okay? Um, this was actually used as a gift to turn into the uh, bongo cat <laughs> for Katsuo. So if you join the Discord, you actually get to have and use the bongo cat, uh, I guess if you have Nitro. But you get bongo cat. Katsuo, because I don't know what made me want to draw that, but I did. And uh, I'm glad that I did draw that. I swear, he is such a character, man. I did accidentally draw them, the arms, the incorrect way, and so then he was like... They were falling at the same time, and then he did both. I had to switch it. Uh, this is kind of doing a throwback to... The way that I drew all of the Yakuza girls a month or two ago, if you go, I don't think I've posted them anywhere. <laughs> I don't think I've been very uh, religiously posting anybody, but it was an easy way to draw. So one of the things that I, like I said, if I'm brain blocked, I start doing chibis, but then I also kind of try to practice similar styles of drawing again and again. So I get more used to drawing certain things. And for me, oh yeah, because this was also a throwback to how I just drew 24 hour Cinderella, Katsuo and Majima. Um, because I want to get better at drawing in certain ways and be able to lean on doing things certain ways. And for this specifically, it's the eyes, the large head, specifically the eyes with the reflector lights in them. And man, she is... <sighs> what I like so much about drawing my specific characters or Monty's specific characters, or even like, because you'll see in... September, I actually drew some of Camel's original characters from her comic. Or a couple months ago, I drew Sparrow from um, Den of Sparrow slash Tower of Dogs slash Grave of Brothers. And what I specifically like about being able to draw my characters is they have such personality that, I don't know, I can recognize them. I can think about how they look. They have a look and they have a character. And for me, when I'm drawing them, their character comes out in the way that, that they're drawn. And it's one of the things that I think people that are leaning so far into AI don't really understand is the, the AI generation takes away the personality. And maybe my art's not as good as it could be or where I want it to be because it's a long learning process of like muscle memory and training yourself and eyeballing things and learning how to do things that you couldn't do before. And days are struggles. Like you constantly are looking, You other artists can tell me if this is how you feel, whether it is with written content or visual content of any medium, constantly looking at it and having to visualize where it's going to be in the future before you even get there. Um, I know that I start looking at my line art, even not my line art, my sketches and being like, this is not looking how I want it to look, but I know it'll look a lot better if I just follow through, because I'll be like, I've only been drawing this for 20 or 30 minutes. I need to focus on what it could be, because this is actually the least amount of time that's going to be spent on it. I can mentally know that, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm impatient. So it's really, really hard. Oh, we got a picture of, uh, this was a toasty, rec I think this was a toasty recommendation, because uh, there are times when our resident raccoon, Toasty Marsh, submits uh some of these little emotion chibi faces and i start i've been drawing them we had one with kaede before we had one with kaede michi and katsuo katsuna before and i'm pretty sure this was one that was submitted by her as well and it's just our sweet little hitomi and majima because he's kind of a weirdo but she likes his weird she likes his sort of weird it is it is her sort of weird they are a perfect couple okay it's just how it is. We come back to Marcella. 
Look, sometimes I just draw sad girls. Oh my gosh. I know people that just draw sad boys. Uh, I draw the girls a lot because I'm better at drawing the rounded faces and I'm still working on how to draw male faces, not horribly and eyes specifically because I can give girls the bigger eyes and get along with it better and girls the like more petite noses and get along with it better. But also they're so cute. All of the girls are so cute. All of the men are so handsome, but all of the girls are so cute too. It's hard. I only have so much time. I'm currently drawing a picture of KC because there is actually a song that came up. It's a uh, Neo Neoni's warning label. Such a KC song. Oh my gosh. When that when I put the video of that up, you'll see what I'm talking about. Cause oh my gosh, KC is a hellion. But he he gets it under control. Okay, trust me. I mean, you you see his controlled anger in Body More 3. Um you see his uncontrolled anger in Body More Zero. <laughs> and not mincing words, Casey is scary. Unless, until he got himself under control, and even now that he's got himself under control, you don't want to be on the wrong side of Casey. Um, yeah. There are days when I actually like the way that the noses are starting to look, and there are days when it is impossible to freaking do the noses, I swear. Also, there are days when it's impossible to do the hair. This was just also another bad right or drawing day. I could not, for the life of me, get this character to look the way that I wanted her to look. I swear. And I think this actually took me a couple of days to get back to it because I just kept not liking it. Oh, so we got, this is another piece of fan art that I did. And it is actually our resident Australian Manaya and his uh, persona. I was also, again, trying to, <laughs> trying to get back into the swing of things. Are we, I think we're getting about to the m later mid part of July. It has to be because uh, the conference convention ended... Not the convention. Sam left. Sam and his roommate left around the 20th. And so this was uh, getting back into drawing, getting back into my regular working schedule. I think Sad Marcella was also part of that regular schedule. <laughs> oh, I'd have to look at what, what date that Sad Marcella was drawn on. But our resident Ozzy is also a rock star, an MMA fighter. He talks about... A variety of things on his channel. He also does mostly comics, or he really likes comics. I shouldn't say mostly comics, because he recently talked about the new cyberpunk book. And um, he's very sassy. He's also very strong personality. <laughs> but what else would you expect from a fighter? He's a really nice guy, though. Bear he is an incredibly nice guy. And I feel blessed to have been able to meet him back in, I think, 2019 is when we sort of first met. There was a... One of the few good things to come out of Minds.com, the writing community over there, has been kind of a hellscape. <laughs> I have I have too many stories, and I feel so bad for anybody that I was like, hey, you should come over here and join us, uh, before I realized just how terrible it was. We're back to Katsuo. Isn't he just a little sassy man? With his fingers. But uh, there are too many stories that... A couple of years ago, I was recommending Minds as an alternative to Twitter, as an alternative to Facebook. Um, because sometimes you want something different. I quit Facebook a number of years ago because I just realized that the people that I was on Facebook to stay in touch with were not the same people online as they were uh, in real life. So a bunch of people that I got along with in real life, I saw so much online hostility in 2016, 2017 that I just... I closed it and I'm like, I don't want to see this side of you. I will interact with you in other places where I don't have to see this. Um, and so I joined Minds as a means to kind of branch out, try to be a part of something else, to look for something else. And um, it was a mistake, as apparently joining most social media is. <laughs> now it is mostly full of uh, crypto bros, extremists of a sort uh, and a lot of people that should probably touch grass I'm just I'm just gonna leave that there but that's how I found his name was Augustin that's how I found why not Wichita which we read on the loin stream I think a year ago that's also how I found new Tokyo and the low end kid both of those were also read on the loin stream back when it was in its infancy because I was just finding indie books to read together and uh, I mean those were those were experiences, that's for sure. 
So this is one of the Michi chibis that I feel like I am the most proud of. It just depends. And I actually want to turn this into a little charm and get a little charm of her to be on my my keychain because I think, I don't know. This one is just so cute to me and it turned out so well. She's just so innocent. I cannot believe how sweet she actually turned out to be as a character, which initially, even when Michi was created, she wasn't a mean character. The first time that she showed up was actually December of 2022, and it was when Shigemi went into the cabaret club looking for Katsuo, and even then, Michi had approached, like, she was big busted. You should see, I at the end of this year, when we're doing the, like, year-end wrap-up, I will show you the original picture of Michi that I drew. I didn't even finish it because I didn't ha like how it looked. Uh, but that was the first time that I drew, and Shigemi doesn't look like herself in that picture either, because Shigemi didn't have a solid appearance at that time either. But she was innocent and really just meant to kind of be intimidating because she was always meant to be a super beautiful girl. Her personality just developed actually in March, months after. Like it was December when Shigemi first met her and she walked in and Shigemi was, or Namichi was like, oh, you know Katsuo-kun, you are his best childhood friend. We love him here. And it was just making Shigemi very feel very inferior because this beautiful woman feel, looks so intimate with, with Katsuo. And it's funny because Katsuo and Michi have sort of a brother-sister relationship, and they always have because their personalities are complementary. The way that they met each other was Katsuo had actually just gotten to Sotenbori and was very lonely, separated from his family. And this, uh, this is obviously a picture of uh, Katsuo and Kaede. But he was just separated from his family and maybe it had been a week or two. He was working at club the, the cabaret club. And Michi just likes to walk and talk and make friends with everybody around Silton Bori. She'll talk to the guys that are fishing, that are just on the pier. She'll talk to random people out on the pier. She'll talk to the convenience store clerks. She's like friends with everybody because she just has that sort of personality where she's drawn to talk to people. She likes helping people. She does things for people. And just that's why she makes the, one of the best hostesses. So, she was actually walking down the the walkway, the boardwalk by the river, and she saw Katsuo kind of just looking put out on one of the benches. And as you do, as she do, she approached him to talk to him, and he thought that she was trying to offer her services to, to him, to get her to come to... Yeah, to get him to come to the club that she works at later and to spend money on her. And she said, oh, no, no, no. I, I just saw that you were sad, and so I wanted to see if I could help, give you company, blah, blah. And so then she sits down, and the two of them start talking, and she's talking about the conditions at the club that she's working at, which is not so great. The, the, uh, the manager at that club is, like, dating three or four of the, the girls, all of the top girls at his club he's dating, and he's trying to pressure her into also dating him, basically using it like a harem. But they're also, he's, you got Yakata, and you got Chiba, and they are basically the top two cabaret managers, or cabaret club managers in Sotenbori, and Chiba also runs a couple of prostitution businesses in the red light district in the area, and so he kind of sends some of the girls from his cabaret club to go and work, or get some of his girls from the cabaret club to go and work in some of his red light items, and uh, Yakata, Yakata, Yataka, I always forget the one guy's name, they kind of also trade girls, so they kind of go back and forth. So they're trying to get Michi to also date number one guy, but also go and work in the red light district. And she is trying to find a way out because that's not something that she wants to do, and that's not really what she signed up for. She became a cabaret girl specifically to remove the sex from the equation and to sort of take control of her sexuality because of the way that she had been treated since developing. Um... And then Katsuo offers her a job at Club Sunshine, and they basically become best business partners, where she is the main girl, the top girl, and she helps him hire the right people and maintain the actual culture of the girls and keep it a warm place. Here we got the first picture of Pina, and it is like the first time that I have ever drawn a horse, or at least drawn a horse in probably 15 plus years. And the uh, hashtag Peanut Nation, because we needed a peanut emoji for peanut my horse from the red dead streams in case you're wondering all of the westies also have horses um billy's horse is named custard i also have visuals for all of these horses monty and i have visuals for all of them billy's horse is custard 
Ace's horse is cream. At the moment, Tommy's horse is butter. And then Ambrose gets a horse named Moose. And then... Daisy gets a horse named Moonshine. She also has a, a hellion of a horse back on her Louisiana home named Hellfire. Uh, who there may or may not be things with that embarrass her. Like, you know, Hellfire trying to mount cream when they get there. Anyway. What was I saying? I was talking about Michi. This is actually, we're back to Marcella. <laughs> doing, doing a, uh, an outdoorsy image for Marcella because she is bathing in the water. As you know, if you're traveling around outside and you're kind of on the run, which is what's going to happen after Tommy springs her from her house, they're on the run from Bounty Hunters. I should say the Pinkertons, but... Um, they're on the run and they can't really stop. They can't really go into towns. People are being looked for because her daddy's got a lot of money. And Christopher Maxim also has a lot of money. And this is kind of a big deal. It's kind of assumed that Tommy was possibly a business that is against Maxim and Bailey and trying to stop the merger because they are going to be a very powerful company if the merger goes through. Um, I think this is also the start of me actually slowly starting to do more backgrounds for the and, and uh, ambient areas for the characters. I was actually very surprised with her body turned out fairly, <laughs> fairly well. Um, but I've also found that I really like doing the or playing with the shadows and the highlights of the curves of the body. And uh, well, you know, if you do a naked body, you don't have to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> the shadows and the folds in clothing. Um, so there's that. But on good days, I have a lot of fun doing the contouring of the body uh, with the shadows and the highlights. So this is actually, I actually have this as a little keychain. Um, I have like two or three more, and I've been trying to figure out what I want to do with them. If I want to try to give some away for early book reviews, or if I want to set up a store on Etsy in case anybody wants any. But I actually have made this into a double-sided keychain at the moment, which is Casey. And obviously, if you know anything about Casey, he is the lead singer of Bait. And if you know anything about Bait, it is short for Badass Idiot Train. Yes, Casey came up with that name on his own when he was 17, 18. Um... But he was the lead singer and also a songwriter, also the guitarist, the lead guitarist. And he is definitely a showman. He just oozes charisma. But he is also dead. Like, I don't know if that's actually considered a spoiler since the second that you meet him in the second book. He doesn't come in until the second book. Him and Ralph exist. Second book, third book, zero. Um, but the second that you meet Casey, you know that he's a ghost because Joey clocks him. And, um... He got that big dick energy. Oh my gosh. He also, in case you need to be reading the third book, because one, you might notice a little bit something familiar about his shoes. Those were definitely inspired by something. And in the third book, he also says, well, ain't that a kick in the dick? Which is also inspired by something. If you know, you know. I think even if, especially if you were around here during August of last, August of last year? September. September, August, um, November, whenever we were playing... Yakuza 0. I said that I would put that in the third book because I was revising the third book back last year at that time. And uh, guess what? Made it in there. So you can actually, if you want to read Body More Zero right now, you can get the ARC version over on Book Sirens. It's linked on my community tab. Or prepare yourselves for the full release, the actual release in October, the end of this month. Um, <laughs> as if it's not October. Uh, this is very, very violent to that man. And then you've got cute little sweet Ralph over here. He is the, the yin to Casey's yang, the calm to Casey's storm, and uh, also a medium. So you'll see him on this page with him pre-medium and post-medium where he's holding the candle. And the candle is actually an element that links into Numina Star by M.M. Morris. And it is uh, a symbol of Olincia, who is a life 
giver a life bringer and uh something that connects it's also something that connects him to marky since marky is the other half of his soul his soulmate and um the person that he's pretty much waiting to meet he will meet her in the numina series so you've at least got that but you'll also see he'll see visions of marky in body more zero so you'll get more elements um body more three enters in a, quite a few elements that will tie into the Numinous series. And then you see even more of them in Body More Zero. Stuff like Church and Ten... Does it say Ten or Tennessee? I can't remember. You get a couple of different things. Oh, I think uh, Antoine's last name is in there. But it's all very cryptic because what he does is he... He connects to this other plane of all of this information that is basically the bookkeeping of... The universe and it's the same way when he gets into somebody's head and starts creating a fetish for them is he reaches into their book knows their soul and then he creates a fetish for their soul and so he just is connected to everything and so all of those books are all of this all of this information that's in his head that he is connected to it's kind of forced its way in and it's kind of a wave that he purges um and so you, those books are introduced or notebooks are introduced in body more zero as joey and Casey go into the apartment. And so then she gets the chance to sort of see the way that the two of them live. So that was everything that I drew that was worth sharing. I have a couple of sketches that I just never finished. And I've been trying to make myself be okay with maybe sketching and not finishing things out and then just dropping that in a different folder um, so that I can maybe practice a little more. So there are some updates on some projects, and I am sure that I will have more to say on different projects as I get into what I drew in August and September, because each of what I draw often is inspired by either what's happening around me or stuff that is being discussed in my books, in um, with my writing partners, or in events in the chat. So if you... <laughs> want to have a chance at inspiring something that I draw or like when I'm when I'm reading like having drawn Manaya or having drawn uh, Sparrow from Tower of Dogs or having drawn uh, having drawn Camel's characters was entirely from being in the chat so I mean that's a place to go but thank you so much for listening to me ramble about art for checking out my art I hope you're as excited about my characters as you possibly can be because I am so excited for them I <laughs> don't know if I could be if I could love them any more than I do but every time I just learn more about them I love them more and I can't wait to share them and their stories and their struggles and the Westies is going to be a story of hope and family and I am so excited to share not that it's not without tragedy because there's a lot of tragedy in it but it is not sad ending it is a story of these kids and uh, the outcasts that they meet for different reasons finding their families um like, even Marcella, as you look at her from her super privileged background, as a songbird, thinking that her dad loves her, and that everything that has been done for her and to her, like, staying in the house and, and training her up to be somebody's wife, like, one of the first things that she says in the prologue, when her and Tommy are talking, I shouldn't say the first things, it's just in the first meeting, because it goes, that's over a couple of days, and so after Tommy has started healing and she has cleaned his pistol for him because it was found in the yard and so she cleans his pistol and gives him back his pistol and they're talking and he's asking her questions about who she is and and how she is and she says that she knows she's going to be somebody's wife and you know nothing against her parents but she hopes that she can be married to a man that she loves because she knows that there's no love between her mom and her dad and that really sets up what's there and um through the 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 situation of that first book with Christopher Maxim, with the way that her dad treats Tommy, especially after she talks about how much she loves Tommy, it, and then how she is introduced to Daisy's family and the way that Daisy lives and has that realization of the house that she grew up in and that way that she lived and then sees how Daisy interacts with her brothers and with her staff. She realizes that her dad never it, what she experienced wasn't love and the way that her dad talked about protecting the things that are valuable it wasn't because he loved her and she had that shocking realization that just everything that she thought she knew about family wasn't there and um this is all the while she's you know four or five months pregnant at the point of her going to daisy's house but we'll get into all of that in the future and i hope you look forward to that story as much as i am i am working on it right now with monty 
I need to be more diligent. I told myself I would be more diligent. Um, we'll see. We'll get there. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions about what I do or what I'm doing or any of my books or collaborations, let me know down in the comments below. With that said, thank you so much. Have a great weekend and don't die. Was that Wayland Cross in the trunk? Do you know, or is that something that's still being figured out? The person in the trunk was not Wayland Cross. Is he in trouble? We don't know who did it, but as the owner of the car, the longer he's missing, the worse it looks for him. Cross isn't a killer. For the last couple of years, the average number of murders in Baltimore has been over 300, and it's been going up. Mind you, that's only whatever the badges count as official murder, and believe me, there are people that don't count when they die. Wayland? If you're down here, tell me. I'm not talking to the badges, I just... I've been looking for you. They found a body in your trunk. Way. Why? Did you do that? To the left. Plain black letters read along the wall. You walked in the corridor. Once that ends, you chose the dark is on the right. My vision goes blurry, flickers black and black and black for longer intervals until I can't see anything at all. I'm not screaming anymore, but my voice echoes back to me. Where the hell am I? You're dead, Josephine. Even smart people do stupid shit sometimes, right?